I'm Steve Marshall, pastor and artist, and I'm excited to share with you my ministry of art evangelism, a series of illustrated sermons on the Christian faith. This video is titled, A Portrait of Christ. I hope you enjoy it and will share it with others. Artists throughout the centuries have attempted to capture the likeness of Christ. They have painted it on catacomb walls and church ceilings. They have painted his image on canvas, sculpted it in marble, fashioned it in brilliant stained glass, and pieced it together in colorful mosaic tiles. Above all, they have longed to see the face of Jesus, the face that smiled upon the children, the face that was moved to pity by the helpless who sought him out, the face that suffered and bled upon the cross. Perhaps they hoped that in seeing his face, they might come to know the man. Although nowhere in the Gospels is there given a physical description of Jesus of Nazareth, nevertheless, a portrait emerges. As we read the stories of Jesus, as we hear his words, as we see his courage and his compassion, we begin to see a face emerge from the mists of time. A form begins to take shape. We can almost see the strong features of a carpenter, his hands rough from working the wood, his chiseled face showing the effects of years of toil in a harsh land, his Semitic complexion dark from the sun, his black hair falling loosely about his shoulders. And yet this common carpenter was also called rabbi, teacher, and so would have worn the characteristic beard and the long curling locks of hair in front of the ears. And so a portrait begins to emerge. It must have been the eyes that people noticed that somehow set him apart from the others. It must have been the eyes that drew those fishermen away from their nets to leave all they had to follow this man. It must have been the eyes. The poet tells us that the eyes are the window to the soul. And oh, to have peered into that window, to have held his gaze and glimpsed the depths of a soul that extended into all eternity. A soul that had been there at the moment of conception. A soul that had created the very world he now inhabited. The creator among his creation. The artist tells us that if he can just capture the eyes, he can capture the very essence of that person. For it is in the eyes that a life is read. It is through the eyes that the soul communicates all its yearnings, all its hopes and dreams, all its fears and failures. It is in the eyes that one looks for expression of what lies within. And it was his eyes that saw through the pompous hypocrisy of the Pharisees. It was his eyes that perceived the faith of the blind Bartimaeus, who looked into the heart of the Samaritan woman at the well, who witnessed the gallant faith of the Roman soldier. And it was his eyes that discerned the cold heart and calculating mind of Judas and foresaw the shadow of the cross. Yes, it must have been the eyes, the same eyes that crinkled with joyful laughter, also wept with tears of sadness and frustration, the same eyes that beheld the innocence of a child, also beheld the evil of men, an evil so wicked and powerful that it seemed to come from the devil himself. Yes, it must have been the eyes that revealed the true nature of this man from Galilee. It must have been the eyes that revealed to all who would look upon this face that God was here in the midst of their lives. And so the rough features begin to take shape. The strong nose dominates the face, the determined jaw hidden behind the beard. The massive hair framing a face that few would ever see, but whom most would recognize in an instant. And the mouth, oh, the mouth that uttered the truths that shattered complacency and challenged convention. 
Oh, the words that fell from those lips and demolished the arrogance and pride of the self-righteous. Words that brought healing. Words that restored sight. Words that brought the dead back to life. Words that put the devil himself to flight. Words that came from the source of life itself. Words to live by and learn from. Here is an expressive mouth with full vibrant lips that love the taste of wine and good food, a mouth that curled easily into a smile of joy, a mouth that flashed white teeth when it broke into laughter, lips that kissed a child and were kissed by a traitor, lips that spoke of love and lips that were silent in the face of bitter accusations and soundless in the midst of suffering. Lips that formed the heartfelt words of prayer and lips that were set in resolute determination in the certain knowledge of what was to come. And above all, lips that ask the question that echoes down through the ages, Who do you say that I am? The portrait is almost complete. The ears take form. Ears that heard the shouts of praise and hallelujah also heard the cries of crucify him. The brow that sweated under the hot sun bled under a crown of thorns. The cheek that was voluntarily offered to the insulting blow suffered the violent onslaught of fist and club. The face that had befriended the friendless was beaten and bloodied just as no narrative of the life of Jesus would be complete without the crucifixion, so no portrait of Jesus can be complete without a vision of his suffering. As Pilate said, Behold the man! And so a portrait finally emerges. A face is finally seen. A portrait, perhaps, that reflects our own expectations a portrait that mirrors our own sense of who we are and who we would be. We may never know what Jesus looked like, but we need not see his face to know him, and we need not feel the touch of his hand to feel his presence in our lives. God bless you. Amen.